you all. Um, as we were just mentioned, the session uh, that I would uh, be taking today is uh, on product portfolio. Uh, but before we get started, um, uh, some um, uh, legal disclaimers. Um, um, so this session is uh, largely for educational purposes, right? Um, it's not an ex uh, alternative to expert opinion and largely uh, focuses on the learnings uh, and my own experiences and some um, com content um, that we found in the in the academic um, world. Um, um, and uh, it's, yeah, um, hopefully uh, you find it useful. Um, again, a disclaimer from SAP side. Um, this uh, presentation doesn't claim or, uh, or make any promises of uh, productizing it or delivering uh, delivering any services from SAP side um, uh, um, on, this, on this specified topic. Um, with that uh, note, um, a brief about me again. Um, like Vibor mentioned, um, my name is Vivek. Um, I work as a product owner at SAP Labs Bangalore, uh, India. Uh, my specialization is uh, uh, core banking, um, and I've been there on core banking for quite some time now, more than uh, 15 years uh, across multiple companies. Uh, been in labs for the last 11 years and 18 years in the industry. Um, I have some entrepreneurial experience. I'm also an innovator with a patent to my name. Um, I'm also uh, uh, the co-convener of the Product Management Forum, uh, a body of um, interested uh, colleagues in product management uh, who help um, um, do various things around product management uh, in the organization and in the external community. Um, that's about me. Um, the agenda for today um, would be uh, to start with an introduction to product portfolio. Uh, then we uh, try to understand uh, how the product portfolio is built in an organization and how it grows uh, in an organization as the grow company grows. We uh, have a look at uh, strategic por product portfolio management and how it can help a company. We take some examples uh, from the industry or from specific companies to see um, how their product to get a give a brief view on how their product portfolios could be. Uh, some do's and don'ts um, that you might be interested in, uh, if at all um, uh, you would uh, want to run product portfolio management in your organizations or you aspire to do that uh, in your career. So we get started uh, with an introduction to product portfolio. Um, I've taken an, uh, the introduction directly from Investor um, Pedia. Uh, so um, as Investor Pedia says, a product portfolio is the collection of all the products and or the services offered by a company. Um, um, and a company's brand uh, success and longevity depends on its product portfolio and how well it is managed over the course of time. So how does a company go about building its product portfolio? Um, typically, a, a company starts uh, with a solution to a problem um, with a, a profitable value proposition, right? Um, so this solution uh, could be a small MVP uh, with uh, uh, on a, of a product or a service. Eventually, it grows into a full-fledged product or a service. Um, as the company grows, more products and services are added, uh, which creates the product portfolio. Um, at the same time, the environment in which the company competes um, is changing and ends the product portfolio has to stay relevant. The portfolio also has to be strategically and tactically managed. Hence, a company has to take uh, business decisions that affect the product portfolio. So these decisions could be acquisitions, diversification, disinvestment, ecosystem development, partnerships, new product development. So such decisions are taken by the company, which uh, keep the product product portfolio growing um, over the course of time. So now we will see how the product portfolio grows uh, in uh, with the age of the company and with the size of the company. Like I just mentioned, when the company starts with a simple product or a service, it's, it'll be branded as a startup. Typically, a startup would have a single product or maybe sometimes a few services. As the company grows over time, it becomes an enterprise. And an enterprise could be a small enterprise, middle enterprise, and or a large enterprise. And accordingly, the size of the portfolio also changes. So in such an enterprise, uh, there will be multiple products, 
or they could be multiple product lines offering multiple products they could be multiple services or it could be a combination of products over product lines and services so these and uh, pro products typically are held across multiple LOBs in an organization. And these products and services may be from organic growth that is developed internally or from inorganic growth that is acquired from companies outside or from diversifying into different areas of interest of the organization or from globalization by spreading the, spreading the products and services across different geographical areas. The, an enterprise can also leverage its ecosystem um, to offer its products and services when i say ecosystem i mean channels and partnerships that the company has an ecosystem is a very key aspect as to how with which a company can really um, deliver, um, deliver more products and services so the ability of a company uh, to deliver products and services via its ecosystem and do the same for its ecosystem can lead to a company having more products and services versus a seamless size company that has a weak ecosystem right so over the course of time also a company uh, made uh, sunset uh, or discontinue certain products or divest certain products so the size of the product portfolio will also reflect these changes um, because of uh, sunsetting or divesting of products eventually um, the company bre may break um, its um, uh, individual lobbies um, into, uh, into uh, companies themselves um, depending on the um, dependencies or um, to need to have um, independent control and growth um, and um, when the companies uh, grows to um, uh, this size right um, they um, they will have uh, product portfolios um, held across companies um, these portfolios will be heavily diversified um, and the, the portfolio will be called the group portfolio um, the portfolio at this time will also include um, uh, company uh, uh, portfolios uh, that are uh, from acquired companies um, or you know um, um, or the divested portfolios across companies right so it is a, a sum total of everything across uh, all companies so um, having said that um, as the companies become enterprises and conglomerates the product portfolio becomes very complex right and at the same time, the business environment is very dynamic. So business choices cannot be random. Hence, a company needs to have strategic approach towards portfolio management. So what is strategic portfolio management? As an organization grows, from its inception yeah? and as long as it lasts um, the product portfolio has to be managed considering the market forces its internal priorities its business strategy and future opportunities so strategic por product portfolio management is the structure right and the process that exists in an organization that manage the manages the product portfolio it ensures timely evaluation of the product portfolio at the same time, it also ensures timely decisions on the product portfolio. Now we will see how the structure is built in organization to manage the product portfolio. As we would expect, a company will have a C-level team led by its CEO. So the CEO provides market guidance, is accountable for growth and profitability of the company. It sets organization goals, approves the strategy and portfolio decisions. The C-level team can have branch out into a corporate strategy team. So that could be an independent team or a separate team that reports to the C-level team and which would be a, a led by the CSO, that is the chief strategy officer. The chief strategy officer understands the market forces, decides corporate strategy, strikes strategic partnerships, makes acquisitions, is responsible for the growth of the company. So this is the functions of the corporate strategy team. In close conjunction with the strategy team, uh, an organization can have a portfolio management team, which is led by the chief portfolio manager or the chief business officer. So chief business, this portfolio management team in the leadership of the business officer executes the strategy, 
It manages the product portfolio of the company and of the partnerships. It integrates the acquired portfolio, makes investment decisions across LOBs, makes the pricing decisions for the products and services, and ENS is responsible also for the profitability of the portfolio. So reporting to the product portfolio team, um, there, there will be different LOBs, and these LOBs will have their respective, respective portfolio management teams led by the EVP, the executive vice president, or the SVP, the senior vice president, or the chief product manager, depending on the size of the organization and depending on the structure of the organization. Every LOB may have ownership of different products and services. So they will be led by the product management teams in the leadership of um, the chief product owner. So this is a structure which is largely relevant to a, a big um, medium or a large enterprise or, um, or beyond that. Um, but um, the uh, structure itself um, it will, will evolve as the company grows. So a simple startup may have a simple um, uh, the CEO itself may do all functions or at best you might have a C-level team uh, managing the portfolio. As the company grows, um, the uh, CEO can have a specific product management team with the C -pro, uh, chief product owner uh, running the portfolio. And, and so on, uh, as the company grows, then you can introduce the LOB portfolio teams and um, uh, under which the product management teams can be managed. So the structure again is dynamic and um, also reflects the growth of the organization. Having decided a structure, it is also important to have a good process, um, which is as a strategic, um, uh, which is um, well defined, and to ensure that this strategic uh, um, uh, aspect to the product management, uh, to the product product portfolio management. So a process that we would like to um, discuss here uh, would start. Uh, with portfolio evaluation. We will see in the subsequent slides what does it mean. Um, the portfolio evaluation will be uh, continue, uh, will be run past the decision factors of the organization. Um, these decision factors lead uh, to the com uh, company having its moments of truth. Uh, and based on that, decisions are made. Once the decisions are made, they are reviewed um and uh, re uh, refined uh, um, by con uh, reviewed with the stakeholders of the organization and then refined and lastly this process uh, is repeated um, on a periodic basis um, to ensure that the portfolio is kept up to date so the recommendation is um, of course for a small company could be the process um, could be more often um, maybe quarterly or half yearly but at least a medium size or large company typically has a, a review process every year. Um, and that is a, probably a good period of time um, uh, to have the process, good frequency to have the process. Um, now uh, we will uh, understand what this uh, first step uh, pro portfolio evaluation means. So a company typically um, would have had a lot of uh, products and services yeah, uh, over its course of, course of time. Based on these, uh, um, on the performance of these uh, products and services, they can be classified as high performing or low performing uh, um, or to could be divested or need more investment. The uh, BCG matrix, which is an industry standard tool, um, could be used um, to evaluate um, uh, the product portfolio, right? So uh, the different products and services can be classified either as cash cows, either as stars, or as pets, or as question marks or problems, depending on whether how, how much of a share they have in the market and how, what is the rate of growth of the market. And depending on the positioning of the product in, in any of these quadrants, you can decide um, uh, if I need to liquidate, if the product is classified as a as a as a pet, uh, which is um, having dropping market share and the market uh, itself is not growing, then might as well discontinue the product. Or um, you have a product which is dominant in the market uh, and it keeps generating cash flows for you, and the market is not growing, then you have a cash cow and um, you leave it at that and just milk it as long as it um, you get the money. 
or if you've identified a star maybe you realize over time uh, the market is going to stagnate then probably you just need to invest a um, uh, little more in the function features so that uh, the product can convert into a uh, cash cow for your company and remain there and lastly then you can take some of your newly introduced products or um, if your product is already uh, is just entering into a new uh, market area um, see the performance of the product uh, and then choose some of them based on the promise they show to invest further and turn them into stars and probably discontinue a few, few of them so the bcg matrix helps in strategic evaluation of the portfolio um, and as we would have experienced your yeah, time and market forces cause the product or the service to fit into one of the four categories and um, using this tool um, uh, and the subsequent steps right decisions uh, may um, may be possible so that the company um, can make right decisions and make profitable decisions so the next step uh, is um, the decision factors so as much as a company has um, its product portfolio which is its current products and services um, uh, a company works in a business environment so um, the decision factors uh, um, which um, the portfolio has to be um, evaluated um, uh, could be classified as uh, under leadership priorities uh, market forces business strategy and lastly future vision right um, so sorry um what does um what leadership uh, priorities affect um uh, the product portfolio uh, and how do they uh, affect it so um different leaders leaders will have different leadership styles and different priorities accordingly the decisions taken affect the product portfolio um leadership priorities can also be defined by uh, what the share, share market or the shareholders expect uh, sometimes strong shareholders can arm twist uh, the company to change its investment decisions at the same time organizational goals and kpis uh, which come from the leadership also affect um, the decision uh, decision the company takes at the same um, uh, same time the risk at appetite of the leadership or the company um, also will affect uh, the decisions taken um, the next step uh, is uh, market forces uh, so what are the market forces that uh, act as decision factors technology changes demographic changes cultural changes economic climate global events legal and political conditions are some common factors at the same time we also see the influence of porters the famous porters five force forces the threat of buyers threat of suppliers threat of new entrants threat of rivalry threat of substitutes affecting the decisions taken the next uh, factor is business strategy companies adopt different strategies like low cost strategy differentiation strategy they may have a different um, growth strategy uh, at different points in time they may have uh, may, companies may change their human resources strategy companies may want to globalize company may want to diversify so different business strategies also act as decision factors on the portfolio lastly a very interesting um, decision factor is the view of the future companies having a view of the future typically end up be, uh, being uh, trend setters so it's a great quality for a company to have um, uh, to um, to have build the right products and for uh, services for the future uh, these companies end up being the stars um, they also are the disruptors yeah the typical uh, googles and the amazons of the world um, and so many other great companies um and of course uh, sap um, as is um, art, um are seen as these leaders in the in the market also uh, the uh, future uh, vision enables a, um, um, a company to see um, the the risks in the in the future so they could be um, the, the improbable risks like the black swans so um, a company's ability to see the future as well with terms, terms of the risks can also be an interesting decision factor so the portfolio um, is then um, uh, evaluated, evaluated along with these decision factors. So once um, and then the company arrives at as it, at its moments of truth. So what could be these moments of truth? They could be eureka moments where the decision factors help the company understand the breakthrough technologies that are available in the market. The company may choose to invest in them. Company realizes 
the internal inventions and the innovations that are there on which more investments can be made. Company may identify great acquisition targets. Company may suddenly see great talent available in the market uh, for recruitment and they can leverage it. So these Eureka moments help the company to take, um, take it to its next state of existence. A slightly negative um, um, moment of truth would be a Kodak moment. Kodak moment is the opposite. Um, um, this would take you to a past state of existence. So these Kodak moments could be realization of technology obsolescence, product obsolescence. Typically, product obsolescence um, are identified as uh, products which are obsolete uh, or becoming obsolete can be identified as pets, and that's the benefit the BCG matrix gives you. Workforce issues in organization may not allow you to really invest well in its portfolio. Um, they, um, if lax ones are occurring are just about the, uh, around the corner, um, they can uh, really affect your, uh, uh, could be a black, uh, uh, Kodak moment for your company. Like we saw um, when the uh, 2008 um, crash happened or in 20, uh, 2001 when the 9-11 happened, um, these really altered uh, the dynamics of uh, totally destroyed some companies. New legal guidelines that emerge uh, from time to time. We see a great legal um, uh, guideline come emerging in uh, Europe around data privacy, and this is causing uh, companies to invest big time um, into data privacy um, compliance into the softwares. Um, and ability of a company to really invest resources towards this may uh, become a, a Kodak moment for such a company. Finally, we have keep the faith uh, moments. Um, these moments um, uh, are typically um, because of decisions, success of decisions in the past. Um, largely uh, from your BCG matrix, these are products which are um, cash cows. So you continue having them in the company and then um, you just uh, um, enjoy the benefits of having a cash cow. Um, it could also um, um, keep the faith moments also can indicate the acceptance and growth of new products um, that we invested in the past. So they are typically stars in your, in your portfolio. It can also indicate successful integration of acquisitions and they're growing well, good acceptance. Again, a keep the faith moment. It also indicates a stable business environment um, where um, um, you know there are not much uh, things happening in the environment around you. Very rare of in the in the last few years, but uh, in the last twelve days, probably they were more stable periods. Um, so um, when the, when there are stable um, when the business environment is stable and the organization is um, also uh, successful, um, it also ensures the, uh, keep the faith uh, moments um, allows the company to also moderate keep its risk appetite moderate. Um, Keep the faith moments also indicate leadership acceptance. There's not much leadership churn happening. Um, so you have a stable organization and of finally the workforce, uh, workforce stability. So uh, when you have such a um, stable environment, uh, largely there's not much of changes um, happening to your product portfolio. So based on um, the portfolio evaluation and the decision factors and the moments of truth, a company can then take decisions. So decisions can be to continue investments, to build or buy new products, to acquire a company, to reduce investments, to divest products, to merge and sell companies, or finally to close a company. So this leads to something called a portfolio churn. Typically, we use it in, in investment, finance, in the, in the field of finance, but I also want, would like to introduce it here. The portfolio chain uh, churn indicates the rate at which products and services are added or removed from the portfolio. So um, if that is the case, a startup may experience a high portfolio churn because it's constantly growing its portfolio. A company in distress because of its failure to react to Kodak moments in the past will have a high portfolio churn because company will stop investing or divesting, merging, selling off. A visionary company or a company on a high risk appetite will have a high portfolio churn. But a, a company with a lot of keep the faith moments will have a low portfolio churn. So the portfolio churn indicates how well, uh, what environment the company is and working in, and um, what is the um, growth or the speed at which the portfolio is uh, changing in the organization. So finally, uh, once you've taken your decisions, um, you have to um, take stakeholder feedback. Um, 
because they become uh, they are very critical part of your eco of your organization and ecosystem you take employee feedback shareholder feedback ecosystem feedback and customer feedback it is important uh, to take feedback uh, otherwise it might lead to employee resistance it might have uh, might create shareholder disconnect market speculation it might lead to negative press custom you may lose customers and in the worst case scenario it creates um, opportunities for your competitors to um, take over your business so with feedback you will have refined decisions these decisions sometimes may be unfortunate you may have to delay investments and decisions sometimes may be fortunate you can also increase investments um, more than what you initially plan to do in certain areas so having seen this process um, of um, portfolio um, um, uh, well, um, in the portfolio uh, process, um, it, it has to be repeated every um, uh, uh, with a good frequency, a uh, consistent frequency, so that the portfolio is um, monitored, reviewed, and kept kept uh, relevant to the current market circumstance. Just. Having had this understanding, now let's explore uh, some product portfolios in certain uh, markets or certain uh, areas, and maybe in certain companies. You can take a manufacturing companies. Typically, for a manufacturing company. The cash cows would be its existing products. A manufacturing company may have its eureka moments, like uh, maybe it can see if the uh, um, offering AMCs or annual maintenance contracts as a chance to include uh, into go into services business uh, for manufacturing and increase its revenues. It can get into space business. It can probably tie up uh, on an e-commerce website and start selling its products, so it gets new, gives you a new channel. Um, so these would be eureka moments for a uh, for a manufacturing company. At the same time, company can experience Kodak moments when it sees that for the last three years there's been a constant decline um, in sales growth, or you see there are substitute products emerging, like cloud storage is emerging as a great substitute substitute for um, maybe um, flash drives and all of that. So a company needs to be uh, careful about it and be able to react to it. Similarly, um, IT services company uh, will have its own cash cows and stars. Um, typically, services, system integration, maintenance contracts uh, become the cash cows of IT services companies. Um, uh, acquired startups, uh, as when they show promise, they become stars. Um, company uh, during its portfolio process can realize eureka moments where it can get into new spaces like automation, it can find opportunities like smart cities uh, uh, for, for a country like India. Uh, banking being the IT, IS IT spender, um, um, company can create a new division to get into banking. Um, at the same time, uh, with the emergence of cloud, cloud on-premise is becoming obsolete. So this could be a Kodak moment for a largely on-premise company. Um, we see a market uh, uh, disruptors uh, or black swans in the market like scams that we're seeing today that could be a Kodak moment for some companies and uh, uh, finally um, uh, a global IT product company um, the cash cows could of course are its products and then it may have its uh, eureka moments of getting uh, expanding its business via cloud uh, blockchain is an emerging technology machine learning is an emerging technology the company can leverage and bring new products around these technologies at the same time like you just mentioned on-premise is being obs becoming obsolete, so companies, global IT product companies, have to watch out for uh, obsolescence and probably start um, having cloud-based um, um, product development. So these are many, um, some exam some views on the portfolios of different um, types of companies, manufacturing and services. Um, then we can take an, um, um, a, a, a manufacturing uh, a company like Tata Motors and see what they might have as cash cows and stars and pets. So typically for a Tata Motors, its commercial vehicles is, is their cash cow. Um, their successful, acquis successful acquisitions, um, especially the JLR acquisition, is a, is a star for them. And we see the passenger business, uh, vehicles business is not doing well for them. Um, it could be a pet for them. They may have to want to probably over time um, divest or sell it off. Um, but of course, uh, based on their strategy, but we, we would imagine they would be seeing them as pets. Um, having said that, um, I will leave you with some um, some examples for you to uh, rack your brains um, after the session. Uh, maybe you can take uh, make my trip um, as an e-commerce company and see 
um, what is its current portfolio, what are its uh, cash cows, what Eureka moments it can see, what Kodak moments um, it might um, encounter, and probably um, also do your own um, portfolio uh, management, uh, uh, a portfolio process for make my trip. Um, you could do it as an exercise. You can also take an Indian uh, FMCG company like ITC, Patanjali, and Britannia. You've seen how rapidly Patanjali has grown, how well it has captured its Eureka moments. Um, but um, what what uh, potential challenges it might have? Something uh, you can do as an exercise and also experience um, in your own space um, product portfolio management. So. Um, some um, some learnings um, we have made, I um, have made, I've learned from my friends um, that um, you could also consider if you're doing product portfolio management now or might, what might want to do it in the future. Um, a willingness to change uh, is very important, imperative to uh, portfolio management because this the business environment is never constant. You need to focus on building distinctive competencies, leverage those distinctive competencies, and uh, build, a, build a portfolio around those competencies. You need to have an agile organization so that as changes occur, have new, you need to let go of the past and get on to the future. You need to have a healthy risk appetite, not too much risk, not too, too less risk. You, it makes sense to have a focused product and portfolio management function so that uh, the portfolio performance is monitored and it's well um, driven in the organization you help it, it will help you to have an awareness of black swans so that you can at least be prepared uh, you don't have to be uh, too cautious about black swans but at least have an awareness of what they are and how when they occur how it might affect you maybe some risk control measures you can have in place and finally you can leverage a strong ecosystem and need to focus your energies on building a channel um, uh, and an ecosystem for your, for your organization. If you, hopefully with these doors, you will have doors, you will have more Eureka moments and more opportunities to invest. Some don'ts as well. Um, being too, imagining you're too big to fail probably is a, is a big risk uh, or a big uh, um, is a bad decision so you're always um, you can always fail so don't ever think you're too big to fail the ostrich effect where you you try to hide away from the challenges around you and be a risk averse is, is very dangerous only organic growth in a modern context where businesses have to grow rapidly and capture the opportunities fast um, is not so suited maybe inorganic growth is an option uh, too much risk, too much leverage also brings in too much challenges for your business. Um, and and added with the with an over ambitious management, you can run into trouble. We have seen how Subiksha started with great promise many years ago, in, uh, some in the 90s, and then in 12 years it had to wind up because um, it took too much risk and it was too ambitious. Lastly, poor communications internally and externally um, can lead to misunderstandings and probably create more um, uh, indecisions and Kodak moments for your company. So um, if the don'ts are not taken care of, well, um, well taken care of, you may have Kodak moments, right? Um, so um, I come to the end of the session. Um, we'll um, um, br briefly summarize uh, what were uh, some key takeaways from, from this session around product and on around portfolio management um, we understood uh, the product portfolio to be a collection of uh, all the uh, products and services of the company and these can be classified as cash cows stars pets and um, question marks um, the we saw the growth of the portfolio as the company grows and the markets change and we saw strategic management product portfolio management as a tool to help the company make the right choices and keep the house in order with that, uh, I open the session uh, for questions. So if you have any questions, um, maybe you can start asking them now. Before I hand it over to you to probably take the questions. 